So before Coco started, they played a 22-minute special, it's not a short, Olaf's Frozen Adventure. This special is about when Olaf has to go find some kind of tradition for Elsa and Anna. I am not a fan of Frozen, not because it's popular and all that. Go to my original review for Frozen that I did back in 2013 from the first viewing. I was a fan of Frozen. From the beginning, I was never a fan of it. It's not bad. It's an okay movie. Frozen Fever also is just okay. That was a cute little harmless short. But I gotta say, Olaf's Frozen Adventure to me is the best Frozen related thing I've seen so far. I surprisingly did really enjoy this one. Now, did it have to show before Coco? No. I really think they should have just stuck to showing this on ABC. This would have been perfect to show on ABC. In fact, if ABC does eventually show it, I will happily rewatch this special. But yes, I do think it was a mistake on Disney's part to show this before Coco. Despite that, I did find a lot of enjoyment with this. The animation, just like with the movie, it looks really beautiful. The characters were really enjoyable too. Olaf is really enjoyable here. He is obviously the main star of the special. And the voice acting, of course, from Josh Gad, Adina Menzel, Kristen Bell, everyone else. That's really great. The deer has his funny moments too in the special. And I did really like that it had the theme of family. It did work for the story. I did have fun with the musical numbers. And I have to say that the movie just did a very good job of getting me into the Christmas spirit. I mean, I'm already in the Christmas spirit as it is because I love Christmas. Like Christmas is definitely my favorite holiday. But this somehow got me into a little bit more of that Christmas spirit. And the comedic bits, a lot of it at least, really worked for me. I found myself laughing more than I really expected when I went to the special. Now as far as flaws go, I will say sometimes the humor didn't exactly work. It definitely could have been better. And then I do think while I did have fun with the musical numbers, they did kind of overdo it with the singing. Like after they're done with one musical number, 10 seconds or 15 seconds later, it'll cut to another one. Overall, I actually did really like Olaf's Frozen Adventure. It gets me into the Christmas spirit. I actually found the characters more enjoyable here. It's just a lot of fun. And I'm going to give Olaf's Frozen Adventure a B. And now, let's get to my review for Coco. Remember me. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I'm here to review Coco. So Coco is written and directed by Lee Uncritch or Uncritch. I think it's Uncritch. Hopefully I get that right. And the film stars Anthony Gonzalez, Gael Garcia Bernard, Jaime Camille, and Benjamin Bratt. So Coco tells the story of this young boy named Miguel who is an aspiring musician. He looks up to his hero, Ernesto de la Cruz. But the problem is that his family bans music. Of course, it drives Miguel insane that he can't live his dream. So one night, Miguel holds Ernesto's guitar, touches the guitar, and it lands him in the land of the dead. And so from there, Miguel has to go on a search that's all I'm gonna really say, and he has to find a way to get back home. So I was really pumped for Coco, I was really excited for it, despite the fact that the trailers, aside from that wonderful teaser trailer, have not been the strongest. However, it did not stop my excitement for Coco, because I love Pixar, Pixar is my favorite animation studio, and they personally have yet to make a film I don't like, at least for me. Every single one of the films that Pixar has put out, I've either liked or loved. And I can happily say I loved Coco. Coco is a wonderful, and I mean wonderful, animated film. And I will admit, I was a little bit worried that maybe the film would be a little too familiar with the Book of Life. I did have hope it wouldn't, but I just did have that concern. And I could definitely say this, 
This film is entirely different from The Book of Life, and I actually really like The Book of Life. I actually do think that's a solid animated film, just a very solid telling of Day of the Dead, while Coco, I think, is a great telling of The Day of the Dead. There's a couple of similarities between those two films, but besides that, they're both entirely different stories, and I'm very happy to say that. And one of the things that really, really impressed me about Coco is how respectful it was to the Mexican culture. This film fully celebrates the Mexican culture it really captures it so well like they got the chanclas down they got the music down the history of the day of the dead I could tell that the people behind this film really did a ton of research because everything was so accurate it was so respectful even down to the cast because this is an all latino cast and i loved how it celebrated the theme of family like there's a lot of films that have themes about families and there's nothing wrong with that because family i think is an important part of our lives but what i just really loved about what coco did regarding the theme of family is how deep they really went into it this film shows that miguel's family is imperfect and also miguel himself obviously is imperfect either but it does a great job of showing that even though your family may not be perfect your family really does care for you and they will be there for you and even for those that have passed away um, they will always be there for you in some shape or form and as long as you hold on to those memories it'll feel like really your family member has never left you and I also have to really acknowledge that the film did a great job of showcasing that life really isn't all sunshine and rainbows. There are definitely good things that happen in life, but for every good, you can also have your bad things that happen in life. And life doesn't go the way you really want it to go. It's about where you achieve in life and where you want to really take your life. But it's definitely not up to life to just make everything go good very easily easily for you sometimes you have to push yourself to make life better for you and i think that's also due to lee uncritch and the writers they did a wonderful job of writing coco from the interactions between the characters to just the overall journey it was really unbelievable to be honest like the dialogue in this film was so compelling. And despite the fact that these are 3D animated characters like Miguel and his family, even his family that are in the land of the dead, like despite the fact that these are all animated characters, they felt like real people. They didn't feel cartoony or anything like that. They felt like real genuine people that you would see in a live action movie. Anthony Gonzalez did such a wonderful job voicing Miguel. There was a lot of heart and passion that went into his voice work. You could tell everyone in the entire voice cast were very passionate. Anthony Gonzalez, not only does he bring the humor to this kid, the charm to this kid, but man, the emotion. When that kid goes for the emotion in that recording studio, he truly brings it. Benjamin Bratt as Ernesto de la Cruz. I thought he was really great in this film. I thought his voice really worked for the character and his singing too. I have to really bring that up. The singing is actually very great. Gael Garcia Bernal I also thought was really great as Hector who is this character that does tag along with Miguel and I'm not going to say too much about him because they really don't show this character in the marketing so I don't want to really say too much regarding him but all I'm gonna say is this movie did a lot and I mean a lot of interesting things with this character and I did not expect for this character to be so complex man after the way he's introduced wow did they really take a turn with Hector the animation in Coco just like with any Pixar film, is wonderful. It's so colorful. There's so much attention to detail. Like when you see Miguel's city, my goodness, does it look like you're in an actual city. And there's times where I don't really feel like I'm watching an animated film because it's really realistic and detail. And same for the land of the dead. Like if this is where you really head after you die and leave this earth, I wouldn't complain too 
too much honestly. The Land of the Dead looks like such a wonderful place. They make the Land of the Dead look so gorgeous. Everything in this film looks gorgeous. It's just unbelievable from beginning to end. Just so many great colors spreading throughout this entire film. And now that I've talked about the Mexican culture, something that really does complement it big time is the music. Now Coco is not a musical film, but it does have music in it. And when we do hear the music, I thought it flowed very well. Obviously it does match the theme of the film, it matches the tone, and most importantly, it just fits the culture. The storytelling in Coco, just as a whole, is very impressive. It has so much life to it. Like, this movie breathes and screams life. It doesn't feel lifeless, it doesn't feel there's no soul to it. This movie is the complete opposite. There's a ton of soul, there's a lot of heart, there's a ton of passion, there's a ton of everything. And it's surprisingly dark. I can't say why, but just view this movie for yourself and you get to see a dark film. Now, that's not to say it's all entirely dark, but that's the thing I have to say that really impressed me about Coco. It has a great balance of being a delightful film, but when it needs to get more dark, the way it does shift into that specific tone, I gotta say, they found a way to shift it without it coming out, without it feeling out of place. I thought the balance of it being dark, but also a delight to watch at the same time, I thought was very well done. And that same thing could be said for the humor. When the film does attempt at humor, it works. And it doesn't feel forced to me, honestly. Like, it does come off so naturally. Like, the majority of this film, like, the majority of this film really does not come off as forced. It just feels natural, and that's what I loved about it. The timing for the humor was definitely there, and it absolutely worked for me. And I also just have to say that I loved Miguel's dog. Miguel's dog is wonderful. I loved every single moment when it came to that dog. I mean, I'm a dog lover as it is, but man, that dog was just so adorable. And even this big creature that you see in the land of the dead and I'll show a picture because I don't know how to describe it exactly but that was a really really cool creature I really like the design of it I love the colors to it uh, that was very neat as well and of course Pixar is known for tugging you at the heartstrings when it comes to their more emotional moments and when it comes to being emotional it definitely does that very well there are two specific moments moments that did get me emotional. Without spoiling anything, there's one moment with Hector. That's all I'm going to say. And then we get to the last 10 to 8 minutes of the movie. Oh my god, by that point I was bawling. I'm not talking a tear. Coco actually made me bawl. I bawled by the end of this film. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. I cried like a baby at the end of the film. You know, I'm a man, I can ha I can admit it. And yeah, it really works. So when the film really does tug at your heartstrings, it pays off so well. There are a few flaws that I did find with Coco, however, like there is a twist that the film throws. And although it is a very nice twist, it wasn't necessary for them to go in that route because we've seen it done a couple of times in other Pixar movies and it was really cool for the first couple of times that they did it. Maybe it's just because this time around that they do it, not only was it familiar, but it just came out of nowhere. Of course, eventually it does drive the story. It was very cool and I really didn't have a problem with it, but when we do get to that specific point in the film, yeah, I will say the twist just 
came out of nowhere. Hector, although admittedly yes, he does get better as the film is going on. When we're introduced to him, I gotta be honest, I was not the biggest fan. I didn't really like his introduction. I wasn't even really liking the character. I thought he was just gonna be this one-dimensional character that, that tags along with Miguel, and there's not gonna be much to this character. Of course, eventually I was proven wrong, but yeah, I just wasn't a big fan of his introduction, and I do think that they could have made a better introduction for the character. And this is a pretty lengthy animated film, and I will say that the film does drag. Um, like, there's a point, I would say one point, there's that 10 minute, 12 minute point, where I will admit, I did feel the pacing drag. Um, now, for the most part, yes, this movie really does move, absolutely, but there is that one section of the film where I did think it was dragging, and I do think that the pacing could have picked up. Overall, Coco is a delightful film. It is dark, it is one of Pixar's darkest films without a doubt, but it is also one of the most delightful films films from Pixar by far. This movie celebrates the Mexican culture, it fully embraces it, and is highly respectful to the culture. The music really did fit this film. It sounded so wonderful. Remember Me is definitely the best song in this film. I am gonna remember that song, no pun intended, for a very long time. I really did love Remember Me, especially such a wonderful song. The animation is gorgeous. The voice cast did a terrific job with their roles, like everyone did such a terrific job with their voice work. The writing by Lee Uncritch and the rest of the writers did a really great job of putting the script together. The direction by Lee himself is really great, and that's no surprise considering he directed the best movie of 2010 in my eyes, Toy Story 3. Thank you so much, Pixar, for doing an animated film like Coco. It really was refreshing to watch that. I'm going to give Coco three and a half out of four stars. A wonderful, wonderful film. I definitely recommend seeing it, especially if you're a fan of Pixar. So everybody, in the comments down below, let me know what did you think about Coco? And between both of the Day of the Dead movies we've gotten pretty recently which one did you like better did you like the book of life better or did you like coco better i do think coco's a better film than the book of life however i still stand by what i say the book of life is a solid film and i do really like that one this is 22 tiger dude here and don't forget that i will always have tiger power for even if i'm far away i hold you in my heart i sing a secret song to you each night we are apart remember me